Welcome to Fargo FX. This is Jason. Some of you may have noticed that it's been a while since I did a video. I actually have, I won't call it a good reason, but at least a halfway decent excuse for that. The channel is going through some changes right now. My shop is going to get revamped. As you can see, it is a mess right now. Uh, but some of these machines are going to go and some new ones are probably going to come in. And then hopefully we'll be able to resume a regular schedule of doing some builds of my own as well as doing some of the other content that I produce here. So while I'm in the process of doing some upgrades, moving out some old equipment and moving in some new stuff, I decided to share what was formerly a three-part sort of video series. Uh, I'm going to do that as all together as one video today. And that is my three knives in three days video that I did, I want to say about this time last year. Now, some of you have probably watched these videos before. I do have a playlist. I'll probably link that playlist at the end, but of course, once you've seen them here, there isn't necessarily any special reason to go and watch the playlist. You'll see most of the content from those three videos on this one video. And of course, this will be a longer video, uh, but I will say these segments were pretty popular and uh, I really had a lot of fun with it. I think I made some good knives and I really wore myself out. I mean, it takes a good 10 to 12 hours to actually make a knife, make a video, and then edit that video. Uh, in fact, maybe a little longer than that. So uh, this, was a, this was a pretty exhausting three days, uh, but it was really good. I learned a lot and I had a lot of fun with it. So anyway, we'll jump right into it. I hope you enjoy these videos and look for more content coming very soon, probably a little bit later in the week. Welcome to the show. We've got a great show today. This is actually kicking off a series I'm doing, Three Knives in Three Days. We're going to see how it goes. I've seen somebody do uh, like five knives in five days before, but that was an experienced knife maker. I'm pretty new to this, and it's going to be a challenge to get it all done. So some of you will remember this machete from a few weeks ago. This is a $5 machete I reviewed from Harbor Freight. I had some issues with it. Uh, as you can see, the handle came loose. That was probably the main issue. Uh, but the steel doesn't seem like terrible steel, at least not on the one that I got. So I decided might as well make a knife with it. Now it's going to be a little tricky because this is some type of stainless steel and I'm not planning on reheat treating it and all of that. I did temper it just to make sure that it's soft enough for me to do some work on it. But beyond that, I'm just going to go with the heat treat that they did at the factory. It seems to hold an edge well. And so I'm just going to go with it. This seemed like a perfect opportunity to do an 8-inch uh, chef's knife. I'm going to call this a gift for my wife. Uh, she just had a birthday, and I got her a couple of little things, but if this works out, I think it would make a really nice addition to the gifts that I got her. Now, during this uh, three knives in three days challenge that I'm putting myself through, I'm probably not going to be doing quite as much narration just because I want to keep the video editing time kind of down to a minimum so I can really focus on producing quality in the knives. But in any case, I think most of the action here is going to be self-explanatory. I'll probably keep almost all of the video that I shoot. I'll just run it fast so that you can get a sense of what I'm doing kind of each step of the way. It's been a while since I used this belt sander in the bench vise. I've really been enjoying my 1x30 belt grinder, but I ran into some issues with it. I guess maybe on a knife this big, it's nice to have a larger belt. So you'll see me kind of go back and forth between the two. I haven't done a knife of this kind of a style with this large of a blade before. So there's a lot of experimentation that kind of went into this. I debated whether I wanted to try to put like a real discreet grind line on this knife. There were a couple of issues with that. As you can see, part of the original hollow grind that was on the machete made it into the cutout of this knife. And so in the process of removing that and taking everything down to a flat grind, that grind line started to wander a little bit on me. So in the end, I decided I would kind of soften that line and give the bevel a little bit of a convex profile. I think that works out with this knife anyway, because it's actually a pretty thin blade to begin with. It's about a 16th inch. And I think it's fine to have a convex bevel on there.
Drilling holes in this material was really difficult. Part of the problem was that I'm using a bit here that I've used before and it was probably already going dull. But I had so much trouble getting through this that I decided, you know, on the handle part here, I would heat it up, temper it back a little further than it was already tempered, and then come in and try to drill. And I guess that worked a little bit, but in the end it was just really tough getting through. But with a little time and a little patience, I got through there. You know, and I was kind of thinking about doing three pins to begin with, but once I realized how difficult it was to get through, I decided two was enough. Here I'm using a scrap of, I believe it's walnut for the knife scales. I've used this method before where I cut out the shape and then split it in half the long way to make the two scales. But I think I might have to invest in a bandsaw soon because with the scroll saw it's really hard to get a good straight cut and I wind up doing a lot of cleanup to get a nice flat surface on the scales. Here of course I'm just drilling the holes in the scales, getting them lined up so that I can put the pins through when we do the glue up. And might as well put a couple holes in the table while I'm at it. Now before I do the actual glue up, I'm cleaning up the top of the scales where they're going to meet the ricasso part of the knife. Because if I don't do it now, it's going to be really tricky to get that part later without scuffing up the blade. Here I'm using a little trick that I saw on Simple Little Life. I'm actually going to link to his channel. He's an excellent custom knife maker and he makes great YouTube videos. I often wind up making just a huge mess when I'm doing the glue up. And I noticed that whenever he does it, he kind of makes a little pad with masking tape and, and uses that to do his mixing and applying the glue. So there it is, all clamped up. Now this was a fast setting epoxy, so I only left that for a couple of hours. The only thing I really had left to do is clean up the scales and uh, sharpen up the blade. I decided not to get too crazy with contouring the scales. I, I kind of like the angular look on a kitchen knife. So I'm really just knocking the corners down a little bit and then cleaning up the surface of the scales with some sandpaper to get them ready for finishing. And for finishing, I'm just using linseed oil. In a few days, I'll probably do another application of this, but for this project, since we're doing three knives in three days, I figured one coat was enough for now. For the actual edge, I'm using a, a worn 120 grit belt and I'm dipping the blade in water pretty much constantly to keep it cool. And then I'll finish that up on the stones here. Well, it cuts paper. Hopefully it'll work in the kitchen. That's about all I have time for tonight. I uh, appreciate you watching, and be sure to check back tomorrow. I'll have another knife, and the day after that, I'll have a third one. And if you're watching this in the future, this will be part of my Three Knives in Three Days playlist, so be sure to check that out.
Welcome to the show. This is day two of my self-imposed three-day knife challenge. Today we're going to make a sort of post-apocalyptic improvised rebar karambit. But first, I need to fire up the forge. And unfortunately, something is missing from my forge. And that would be charcoal. So before I can get to work forging, I will need to make a quick run to town and pick up charcoal and also pick up some grinding belts. And since you're here, I figured I might as well take you along for the ride. But don't worry, I'm in a hurry, so this is going to go fast. In fact, by the time I get done talking about it, I'll probably already be back firing up the forge. We're going to use half-inch rebar for the project. And the first thing to do is to forge out what's going to become the blade. And to do that, I'm just going to flatten and draw out the rebar. As you can see, I'm trying to work about half on and half off the edge. That just helps to draw out the steel a little bit faster. I tried a little experiment here. I don't have a cross peen hammer, so I actually took out a splitting maul. It's pretty blunt, but uh, it still didn't really work the best. So I went back to the hammer. It probably takes a little bit longer to draw out the metal than if I had a cross peen, but it really doesn't take that long. As you can see here, I'm kind of forging in a little bit of a point on this blade, uh, but a little bit later you'll see that with some changes I make to it, all that work was kind of for nothing, but it's good practice anyway. At a certain point I noticed it was starting to sprinkle outside. I do have the forge set up outside, uh, it's kind of like right in the entryway. But if it rains too hard, I'm not going to be able to keep working, so I ran out there to take a look. It didn't look good, but the storm never really materialized, so I was able to keep working. So once I had the blade more or less the way I liked it, I turned it around, cut off the excess, and got to work drawing out the tang of the knife. This really is going to be the handle and I need to draw it out to a nice, thin, sort of whip-like tang so I can curl that around to make the loop for my finger. I didn't quite get the whole process on camera. For some reason, the first couple minutes of putting the curl in here, I somehow the camera just wasn't rolling. So, But you get the idea of how this works. You just kind of keep after it and keep working it until you get the shape that you want. At a certain point, I could tell that I really had too much material and I had to go in and cut a couple of inches off the end. So once I had that finger loop the way I wanted it, it was time to go in and clean up the profile of the blade. For some reason, the 1x30 was acting up today. I actually broke a belt on it. So I actually wound up using a lot of different tools to finish this knife. I had already forged a little bit of a bevel, but I wanted to do the rest with the 1x30. And then I wound up breaking another belt. It just developed all kinds of problems. And finally I decided to give up on it for now and come back to it later. So as you see here, I used the angle grinder to finish out the bevel. And you'll notice there's actually a cutoff wheel on there. It's an older wheel and it's pretty worn, so it has a little bit of flex in it. So that helped me to take a little bit at a time and I didn't have to worry about gouging the metal. So it actually worked pretty well. I decided to go with an oil quench for this. I've actually tested both oil and water in the past, and I found that the water quench was probably the most reliable way to really get a good quench on rebar, at least on the rebar that I've been using. 
But in this case, I decided to go with oil because I knew it would be less likely to crack or warp. And since I'm working on a pretty tight schedule right now, I really couldn't afford to screw this thing up at this stage. Uh, as you can see here with the file, the quench worked very well. The steel is quite hard. In fact, if you listen, you can hear the difference between the file kind of skating over the blade where it was hardened and digging into the handle where the steel is still soft. So with the hardening done, it's time to temper it back a little. For this, I just put it in the oven for one hour at 400 degrees. That gave me a little time to fix the problem with the 1x30 and get that working again. So to finish the bevel, I just took my time, made sure to keep the blade cool by dipping it in water, and did my best to work evenly across the full length of the blade, taking a little at a time until I had the bevel that I wanted. And then to actually sharpen the edge, I used an old, very worn 120 grit belt. I like the look of this. It seems like it has good balance. So you'll see me kind of having a little bit of fun with it, but I am not by any means skilled with a karambit. About the only thing I really know about using a karambit is that if you don't know what you're doing, it's really easy to hurt yourself. I'm definitely being very careful to keep that blade away from my wrist. And that's one kind of injury I really don't want to capture on film. I decided to do the paper test but I could only find a few little scraps of paper laying around. I guess I went a little nuts yesterday with the chef's knife. But it cuts the paper I had. And with that, I'm gonna call it a day. It was a fun project. I'm glad for the way it turned out, but it has been a long day and a lot of work. Also, I think my hat is pretty much completely destroyed. Definitely time to pick up a new one. This is the third installment of my three knives in three days challenge. Today, I will be making a kiridashi, and I'm going to do that using the remnants of a lawnmower blade. I had three of these back earlier in the year, and uh, I've made some different projects with them. We have several videos showing different knives and things that I made from them. But uh, after each of these projects, there's always these scraps left over because of course a lawnmower blade is really large. So I thought I'll use a piece of this material, just a scrap that might otherwise have been thrown away, and I will turn it into something useful. Specifically, a kiridashi. And this is my first kiridashi, so it's gonna be interesting to see how this goes. From everything I've seen, the design looks pretty straightforward. You have a single bevel, like a chisel, and then from the other ones that I've seen online, it looks like people just kind of throw in a certain amount of personality, uh, obviously traditional, Japanese kiridashis have a different look to the ones that have really proliferated on the internet lately. But I like that. It's fun to take a simple design and modify it a little bit and kind of put your own character into it. So I'm not really going to be doing a lot of forging on this, but mainly I want to make sure that this piece is very, very flat. And then I want to get it up to forging temperature and work over the surface a little bit, try to mark it up a little, give it some character. You know, it, it had a lot of deep grind lines and stuff on there from whatever project I was doing last time. And I really want to return it to more of a forged looking state. So to do that, I'm trying a few different hammers and just kind of pounding on the surface. And the whole time I'm also trying to keep it as flat as possible. Clean it up with the wire wheel there, and uh, it looks pretty good. So 
So I'm using a pencil. A lead stands out pretty well on this forge blackened surface. So I'm using a pencil to just uh, really, really roughly sketch out a shape that I want. This isn't going to be the exact shape of the finished knife, but it's uh, a rough shape that I can cut down to and then kind of go from there. There's going to be a lot of improvising in this knife, and, and you'll see that as we get more into the project. I made a couple of changes to the design along the way, but they were pretty minor, and really the, the finished knife looks a lot like the sketch you see here. So keeping in mind that I'm working on a deadline because I have to get this project done today, since it's day three of my three-day challenge, I went a little bit too fast. And uh, a few weeks ago, I put out a video that actually turned out to be quite a popular video where I said knife makers don't make mistakes. And of course, that was a little bit tongue-in-cheek. Uh, but here's an example of a mistake that a knife maker makes. I don't know if you caught that there, but I had everything all ready to go, brought out the cutting disc, and blew right through what was going to be the handle of my Kiridashi. No. So I had to go back to the remaining piece and cut out pretty much the exact shape that I was cutting out of the other half of it and kind of do that over again. So in this case, I didn't just make a smaller knife when I made the mistake. I actually had to discard that piece. Although you never know, that little piece might become a knife at some point in the future. Tried a few different tools to work on shaping this outline of the knife. I found that the best tool was definitely the angle grinder. Removes material fast. I was able to build in the basic geometry that I wanted and then put it on the belt sander and kind of clean that up. And you know, it's kind of a process, for me, it's kind of a process of going back and forth between the grinder, seeing what looks good visually and then trying it in my hand and seeing if it feels good and just kind of working back and forth. This probably took me a good half hour working with different tools, different machines. I even had a like a half round file out at one point, working on it by hand. You know, everybody's different, but for me, this is actually a fun part of the process of kind of sculpting it and seeing what comes out and working on it and working on it until it really looks, to my eye, it looks good. You'll see me using some smaller metal files just to kind of deburr the edges. Of course, in the process, I'm removing a little bit of that nice forge blackened scale patina thing. But uh, this is obviously going back in the forge for heat treat when I'm done shaping it. So we'll still wind up with a nice hammer forged look. And when it came to putting the bevel into this, I really only have one tool to do that job. And that's this uh, 3 by 21 belt sander from Harbor Freight. I found that it fits really well in my bench vise. It holds there securely. And as long as I'm careful about what I'm doing, I can get a lot of work done on this sander. A word of caution. If you try a technique like this yourself, there's a lot that can go wrong with this. So I would just carefully examine it, make sure that it's secure in the vise, but not too much so you're going to damage the sander. And then always be aware of where your body is, where your arms and wrists are relative to where that knife is. Because if something catches, that sander's moving pretty fast and it could easily throw that knife back into, well, back into anything that's downrange of it. So be careful about that. And of course there's the danger that you could slip and catch a finger on that grinding belt. Uh, I actually did that once and I have a little video of the results. I'll post a link to that here so you can check that out if you want. Uh, there will be blood. I'll just warn you. Most of the time when I'm working, I'm really focused on what I'm doing. I'm focused on the next step. But every once in a while, something catches my attention. And here I just got a little bit of footage of the, of the forge roaring and sparks shooting out of it against that dark backdrop of the night. I mean, there are some experiences you have when you're doing this kind of work. I don't know what to say. If you haven't ever tried forging, just give it a try. It's indescribable. It's some of the hardest work I've ever done, but it's also some of the most beautiful and the most rewarding, and yeah, just give it a try. 
Time for the quench. With this, I went with an oil quench. I don't know a lot about the steel. This came from a lawnmower blade, as I mentioned before. And without knowing any specifics about the steel, I just kind of had to go with what I felt worked. In the past, when I've made a knife out of this steel, I have, I think every time I've quenched in water, but on at least one occasion, I saw some cracks develop and I saw some warping. So this time I went with oil. I have to say, I've been getting a little bit more into oil quenching lately, and I've had some really good results. I have yet to see any warping or cracking or anything like that with oil. I suspect that depending on the steel, you may not be getting as hard of heat treat with oil as you would with water. But most of these projects that I'm doing here are for learning purposes. So I'm not necessarily trying to wring that last 2% out of the performance of my steel. I mean, if these wind up with a Rockwell hardness in the 50s, I'm pretty much happy with that. After tempering, I brought it back to finish off the bevel. And boy, this took me a long time. Whatever kind of steel this is, the oil quench worked really well to harden it up. And even after a good long temper at 450 degrees, this was a very hard steel. So after pretty much finishing up the bevel, I looked around and found an old worn out belt. This is actually a sanding belt for wood and it was very, very worn. So I would probably equate it with maybe a 200 to 400 grit sandpaper at this level of wear. So I used that to just finish out the end of the bevel and get it right down to where the blade was already sharp. And then I brought out some 500 grit sandpaper, some wet dry sandpaper, and you'll see that that's how I really finished off the final, final edge. And you'll see that I'm going across the grain, but I'm only doing that right out at the very edge. And I'm really not removing much material. It's almost just polishing that edge. So I tried something a little different this time. I noticed the point of this thing was so sharp that I could actually, at one point, I poked myself with it. And I didn't even realize that it had gone into my skin until I looked. So I thought it might be interesting just to show the way the point of this knife just slips through the paper like almost like there's nothing there. There might be a little bit more work to do, but but for now I'm pretty satisfied. Now as I understand it, a kiridashi is intended to be sharpened with a chisel grind, so there's a bevel on only one side. So if I understand right, the side with the bevel is the top, and the side without the bevel is the bottom. But just in case you forget, <laughs> I, I literally did not plan that. That was stamped from the factory into the lawnmower blade and just happened to wind up right there on the Kiridashi. So it's kind of fun. It's a little reminder of the history of where this blade came from. Now, I thought about calling it quits right here. I mean, I said I was going to make three knives in three days. This is day three. This is a knife and it's done. But I kept thinking, you know, it's a neck knife. And... A neck knife isn't really finished until you can hang it from your neck. So, to truly complete the project, I did make a sheath for it. I didn't capture that on film. But I have a couple of other videos detailing that process. I'll link to some of those here. I had my doubts along the way, but I have to say it turned out really well. And I now understand why people like these so well. If you've never had a Kiridashi in your hand, find somebody who has one and just try it out. It's, it's a very interesting knife. You know, it's not really a weapon. It's essentially a utility knife or a marking knife. But there's something about holding it in your hand. It's just so precise. Honestly, this is becoming one of my favorite knives. Well, with that, the three-day knife making challenge is done. If you haven't seen the other two, uh, I will link to the playlist at the end of this video so you can watch all three. Thanks for watching. Really appreciate having you here. Throw me a like if you would, subscribe if you haven't yet. I'd love to hear from you, get your feedback, comment, join the conversation. And wherever you are, have a great day and we'll see you in the next video.